Hi there, how's it going? Welcome to Malta. This is the town of Mekaba, also called Le Imkaba, the Maltese flag there. A sunny, clear day. I am so excited. Yesterday was overcast, cloudy, raining. Finally seeing some real sunshine in the Mediterranean. So, if you saw my uh, last uh, series of videos, or any of them, then I was doing various ancient ruins exploring, but there is much more to see, including going back to uh, some of the places that I went yesterday. So, after uh, leaving the uh, cart ruts, which I am going back to next, I will explain more about that later, but uh, I drove through uh, this town here, and just got a glimpse of the amazing church or cathedral, whatever it is. It's a church. It is a church. Thank you very much. There you can see, 10 minutes past 12 noon, and they are obviously getting ready for a festival here. So I had never heard of this uh, particular town here in Malta, Mkaba. But, as you can see, another absolutely spectacular scene of these old stone buildings. You see them everywhere. They are still uh, using them. No idea when these particular ones were constructed, but that is just a spectacular church there. And so I just uh, drove past and got a glimpse of it late in the evening and wanted to come back and uh, start this uh, video of exploring just to give you an introductory glimpse of the incredible architecture of Malta and the history which we are going to be diving much deeper into. And so for those who didn't happen to see the previous videos, then I want to give another introduction, an overview of Malta in general. So Malta is an island archipelago in the Mediterranean Sea, basically right in the middle of the Mediterranean, halfway between Sicily, Italy, and Libya, North Africa. It is a very interesting, unique country, a mix of European and African. The language is kind of a cross between Italian and Arabic, and it has major influences from uh, both continents, more so the European side. Also there is the British influence, it was a British colony until Malta gained independence in 1964. And the history here is absolutely staggering as you will be seeing in this video. It goes back basically prehistory and Many of these sites are, to a great extent, unknown as to the civilization that's existed, that created the structures, what the meaning, what the purpose was for many of the uh, ancient sites around here. So pardon all the construction, but uh, I'm guessing that uh, a lot of this is about an upcoming festival. So. 1598 to 2023, not sure exactly what that is referring to, but uh, that tells you a little bit about the uh, history, but 1598 is nothing. It is going to go back a lot uh, farther than that, including in today's Day of Exploring. So let's get going here. So here's an example of the driving situation. Looks like bolts works here. All right, and then uh, you got to try to get through while you can. Crazy driving around here. There is so much traffic. It is a highly densely populated little island, the fifth most densely populated country in the world. Half a million people on a very small island here. And as you can see, old architecture all over the place.
So if you might be wondering, where is all the rock coming from to build all these stone walls and churches and everything? Your answer might be right over this little hill here. Check this out. If we can get up there, I didn't choose the best spot, but uh, oh man. This is intense. Boom. Now, I have no idea if stone blocks are coming out of here or mostly just dirt, sand, whatever, but uh, there you go. That gives you an idea of uh, where the materials are coming from for the constant aggressive construction happening all over this island. So, I am on a bit of a detour to see the cart ruts. If that doesn't sound interesting, if you didn't see the last video then, it is actually one of the most interesting things in the world, literally, the cart ruts. You will be seeing them soon. I'm going back there because there is much more to see right in that area. They are right over there. I finished my video yesterday there late in the evening. But up ahead is the Dingley Cliffs, and it looks amazing as well. Also, I'm hungry for some lunch, and so I'm going to uh, find something to eat and then head back to the cart ruts because there is much to explore there, caves, and we'll see what else. And so these are the Dingley Cliffs. I recognize that island right there from yesterday when I was exploring the very ancient temples, which I think are basically up and over that hill over there. And then it looks like there's a little town of Dingley up ahead where hopefully I can find a little something to munch on. And there is the mysterious globe that I was seeing yesterday. So what is that? An observatory, perhaps? I wonder if we can get a closer look at that thing. And yes, looks like we can, in fact, get a closer look at it. So, what the heck is it? An antenna sort of thing? There's like antennas around it. I guess it must be an observatory. Navigation transmitting site. Very interesting. Okay, where's some food? Open. Looks like that's a restaurant, all right. So I got a piece of cheesecake and a milk, but there is much more coming. I got this to-go platter. It looks really good. It I'll uh, take with me to get out of here. So there's the big golf ball thing again. The dingly cliffs are just over there. And here is the turn off to the cart ruts, which are right there where those two cars are parked. And then you walk just a couple of minutes. So I'm going to read this explanation once again about what the cart ruts are, so that you know what we're talking about. The enigmatic cart ruts are Malta's mysterious remains from prehistoric times. Although various theories have been suggested for their use, it is still a subject which is highly debated. Cart ruts have been mentioned since the 17th century, and since that time many foreign visitors, scholars, amateurs, and professional archaeologists have studied them and tried to provide an understanding of why and how these cart ruts were created. The ruts are to be found all over Malta and Gozo. They can be found in pairs, and the grooves in the solid rock are V-shaped. So found in pairs meaning two lines, as in a cart with four wheels could go through it. The depth is generally about 60 centimeters deep, and so 60 centimeters is 
around, I guess, two feet. While the distance between each parallel rut is usually about 1.41 centimeters. So that is wrong. I think that what they're intending to say there is 1.41 meters, not centimeters, because it's saying the distance between each parallel rut. 1.41 centimeters is not even an inch. They mean meters there. The distance between the two ruts, as you will be seeing in just a second. The exact purpose why and how these ruts were made is not known. However, there seems to be a general consensus that these were used, created for transport-related purposes. A good number of these ruts are located close to old quarries. So, I just uh, visited a quarry right over there, literally one minute down the road, which may suggest that if this theory is correct, the ruts were used to transport stones to building sites. Another suggestion is that soil was transported from one area to another in order to create fields close to where the people were living. So, either they were transporting big stone blocks and rocks and whatnot, or big uh, carts full of dirt soil to take over to the fields where they were farming. The Clapham Junction area is considered as having the most extensive set of ruts anywhere on the islands. It is still possible to follow the ruts for a considerable distance, although some are today covered by modern fields. A Punic Roman tomb cuts one set of these ruts, indicating that the ruts were there before the tomb, and thus offering further information about dates for their creation. So, that is one piece of evidence indicating that they are at least 2,000 years old when a Roman Punic tomb appears to be created on top of after the creation of the cart ruts. Let's go take a look. So here's the parking area. Before commencing the adventure, time to munch on some lunch. So this is just some bread and here is the meat of the matter, so to speak. Not just meat. It is a platter box for two. It was 20 euros, and as you can see, this is way more than I'm going to eat right now, but this is definitely going to be very satisfying. This is really an adventurer's meal for sure. So there's some sausages, looks like onions, some kind of spread, I guess, to go on the bread there, breadsticks, artichoke hearts, olives, capers, and a salad. Oh yeah. That is gonna do the trick. So if anyone has any idea what the heck this thing is, let me know. I have no idea, it doesn't really taste like much. It might be some weird kind of cheese, but not much flavor. I cannot tell what the heck that is. Also some sun-dried tomatoes. The sausage is good, the olives are great. Let's try the artichoke. Mm-hmm. This is really like a Mediterranean platter. So last night I walked past this area here and didn't notice that this could possibly be one of the cart ruts, but it isn't exactly clear. As you will see in just a second, then the other ones are unmistakably odd in this landscape of all these sharp, chaotic looking rocks. No real uniformity, a little bit. There you can see kind of a line going like that. But once you see the cart ruts, you're left scratching your head thinking, what the heck is this? Now that is the reason why I came back here. Caves. Gar il Kabir. It looks like it might be a bit of a hike. No idea how long we have the mining operation in the way. 
And so I'm going to head over there soon. Just going to show this fairly quickly since I made a whole video about it yesterday. So they are following the lines down there. And so here they are. See, look at that. You come across this, especially right there, and you can't help but think, that sure looks like a road. So look at this. Like the sign said, 60 centimeters deep. It would be one thing if it was just this. But they are continuous for kilometers. There's just kind of no way to conclude that natural phenomenon would have caused these kinds of deep grooves that are the same width apart and that go on for kilometers all over the island, all over Malta and the other island of Gozo. I mean, that is just one of those things that at first you see it and you're thinking, well, that's weird. And then the more your mind tries to process how this was created, you're just left, you know, really kind of stumped. I mean, there is an explanation. It is carts going on the same path back and forth over and over for what would have to be centuries, it seems. So I believe that I have seen this before in Pompeii, Italy, the, of course, city destroyed by the eruption of Vesuvius in, I think, 79 AD. I remember seeing also some uh, similar sorts of ruts in stone. So that is the kind of only real explanation that uh, anyone can imagine is cards going back and forth. But uh, when you figure pre-Roman and then go back in time, then you're left wondering when was the first cart to go here? When was the last cart? So like, what was the time frame of when this was you know, first being populated by people, and then how long did that period last to create ruts that deep in pure hard stone? I mean, it's just kind of almost hard to imagine that just carts going across such hard stone could cause that, but over centuries and centuries, and that is apparently what it does. And then here you have like a junction. So this is called Clapham Junction cart ruts. There are other sites all over the islands. So this makes perfect sense as a junction. The way that they go together you would have your cart coming along and then go into that one and then it works also this way, right into this one. So it makes perfect sense, it just still leaves you really wondering about the civilization that existed at that time. That is basically going back into prehistory in which you can't really know what that civilization was called how advanced they really were. And the really big question mark is the actual dating of it. Because from what I found online, then experts believe that they are around three to 4,000 years old. So that sign didn't give you a date. It just uh, said likely to be pre-Roman. But then what I read online was apparently People saying 
700 BC to around 2000 BC, something like that. But I think there must be a huge question mark next to that. Okay, so now the mission is to find the caves. I'm gonna go back to the sign and see if it manages to actually point me in the right direction. So here's the sign for the caves, Gar Il Kabir, and it does have an arrow that is pointing very vaguely in that direction. So this is interesting. Steps going down and a little entrance into a cave there. But I'm looking for something much bigger. Let's see if these guys might know about some caves. You're just going there anyway, I guess? Yes, yes, yes. Great. That's why I told you to follow us. Yeah. Are you from Malta? Yes, yes. All right. Where do you come from? Northern California in the United States. Nice. Yeah. San Francisco area. Nice, yeah. nice. Which town are you from here? Calcara. It's very yeah. far from here. Calcara, okay, I haven't heard of that one. And Zabut. Zabut you heard of? Zabut. Yes. I haven't heard of that one either. No, because they are not that touristic, you know? Yeah. It's not like you're saying Slim or St. Julian's, you know? Valletta, yeah. Exactly. Those are the mainstream cities. Yeah. That's what I'm trying to get away from and I'm having a lot more fun than sitting on a beach, you know? Yes, obviously. So much to explore. There is so much packed into this country. Like... It's true. It's true. Oh, there's, yeah. Yeah. Do you know anything about the history at all? Yeah, no idea. I think maybe a lot of this is just mysterious, even to the experts. For the caves. Yeah, like yeah. when people maybe lived in them or... or oh, yeah, know. I know that sometimes they make parties here. Okay, <laughs> okay. They're still making this use of it. It's a good place to drink, you know, in the middle of the night, for sure, uh, with your friends. Yeah, but that's illegal, eh? Yeah. I'm sure the police don't come here too much, no, so... No, no, no. It's far from the road, yeah? Yeah. Uh, so it's illegal to drink beer, like out in the open like this or something? No, it's not illegal like this. If you're on the street, maybe it's illegal. Okay. And, and after it, after and it's, it's yeah. glass bottle. You can oh, I see. drink glass bottles. So uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. There's one sign, and then exactly. it leaves you on your own. Exactly, literally. Yeah. Well, there you go. We have one, two, three. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Right on. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Enjoy. Thanks. All right. Here you go. Lots of soot on the ceiling. But these are very low. Well, okay. They're low now because of all the dirt, but probably they were much deeper at another time. So what is with all these rocks? Pile of rocks. They don't appear to have fallen out of the ceiling or anything like that. Why are a bunch of rocks piled up in here like this? I mean, the dirt makes a little more sense of just over time filling in but then the rocks on top, almost to the top of the ceiling, that just seems a little bit odd. And then here you can get the sense of them being lived in. Yeah, there we go. We have walls. All right, all right, all right. Oh, you got a barbecue going, huh? No, not really. Just cooking. Yeah, sure.
So definitely a bit reminiscent of one of my favorite places in the world, Cappadocia, Turkey. And yet also a very uh, different style in some ways. So what is the connection between these and the cart ruts five minutes away? The mystery continues of what the actual human civilization was. It was living here and when. Very cool to see though that uh, the caveman lifestyle is so widespread. I just find it quite interesting to imagine life at that time living in a cave. So here it's just unmistakable that uh, there was human activity in here. This right here looks very carved out. All right, I guess that is kind of it. Let's explore around just a little bit more, see if there's anything else. And so here you have these carved out little spaces up here. Could those have been more pigeon roosts? quite possible. So in Cappadocia, a lot of the caves have little carved out indentations similar to that. And they were carved there by the people who lived there for pigeons to roost in. And then they used the pigeon guano to fertilize their crops. So it was very essential for their survival to have fertilizer it would make the fields more uh, abundant. Now I wonder if this could be a tomb area perhaps, although that's the wrong shape for a tomb. Too wide, too short. And then a little sort of altar thing, but uh, this here is just, you know, absolutely obvious that uh, this is all carved out by people. But uh, here, you can't say it's so short because of dirt, because here you have the rock. And so that leaves you wondering if this actually was a living space or more of a tomb area or for animals or storage or ammunition or who knows. But. Uh, for one thing, perhaps they were quite a bit shorter than us, on average. Here it is taller. I can stand. Not seeing so much of the soot. I guess that could be it. So, uh, I was just say, but uh, definitely people were doing something here. Hagar Kim Najdra Neolithic temples. So I was here yesterday. 
it is open until 6 p.m. I got here at quarter to six and the ticket office there was closed. I tried to uh, sort of persuade the guard to let me just go take a look for a couple of minutes because you can see it is right there. He wouldn't go for it. But then there's another complex down the hill towards the sea. He said, you can go along this path this way around the fence. And so I decided to do that. I saw the other big tent like this, went down there and inquired there. And the guy there let me in. And I was able to look closely at the uh, stones and get some video footage. But I wanted to come back and see this one. So, Hagar Kim Temples. Hello again. Hello. So there you go. These temples are remarkable. They are not quite at Stonehenge level as far as the size of the blocks, but they are definitely getting close. Hakar Kim. Standing Worshipping Stones is a megalithic temple complex found on the Mediterranean island of Malta dating from the Gigantia phase. So there are the Gigantia temples on Gozo Island, which Graham Hancock covered in his Ancient Apocalypse Netflix series. That is one of the reasons why I decided to come back to Malta, I wanted to see more of the ancient sites after having seen that uh, you know episode in the series by Graham Hancock, Alternative Archaeologist. I forget if he came to these ones as well, he might have. So the uh, same uh, civilization period of time as the Gigantia temples on Gozo Island, just north of Malta. The megalithic temples of Malta are among the most ancient religious sites on Earth, described by the World Heritage Sites Committee as unique architectural masterpieces. In 1992, UNESCO recognized Hakar Kim and four other Maltese megalithic structures as World Heritage Sites.